after missing a couple of games, Cardinal left fielder Matt Holliday back in the lineup tonight. He'll bat fourth. The newest Cardinal, left-hander Arthur Rhodes. And Cardinal fans filing into Bush Stadium, game one of a three-game series on an overcast night here at Bush Stadium. Welcome to the telecast. Rick Horton alongside Al Roboski and Al. Big win last night, and a lot of it had to do with the performance of the Cardinal first baseman. Well, Albert took that extra hitting yesterday, and it really paid off as he had another magical night. Four for four, the 33rd time in his illustrious career that he's had a four-hit night, and let's hope he continues that against the Rockies. Albert back in the lineup. Of course, so is Matt Holliday and Lance Burke. Well, Berkman and Todd Helton, both candidates for Comeback Player of the Year. More on these two sluggers when we come back on Fox Sports Midwest. Of treats here at the ballpark, including snow cones. The Rockies and the Cardinals game one of a three-game series, and this game will feature a couple of players that many would have thought were at the end of their career last year. The numbers were waning, but this year Berkman and Helton both having very solid years, Al. Absolutely. Todd Helton has really rebounded from that four season, batting over 300 again. You see the production, and he's batting 319 against right-handed pitching. Lance Berkman, while well, we know of his phenomenal season, tied with Albert Pujols now for the National League lead with 28 home runs and all the production leading the Cardinals in RBIs. These two players, both outstanding individuals, have to be the leading candidates for the comeback player of the year. And both sluggers in the lineup tonight. Berkman, now we'll talk about our starting pitching matchup when we come back.
the franchise leader and wins and starts for the Colorado Rockies, has always had a good sinking fastball. Not throwing as hard anymore, but he's still a very good competitor. On the other side, Kyle Loesch. Last time he faced Colorado, he pitched very well in the Mile High Stadium. He's had some problems since that time, but he's looking to rebound and have a very good game here tonight against the Rockies. We'll be back with more from Bush Stadium when we come back after this. Two very good first basemen here at the ballpark. Classy guys with great careers with their original clubs, Todd Helton and Albert Pujol. Get up and get out! Help this done it! The Rockies win it! 
is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. By Chevy. See your Mid-America Chevy dealers. By Southwest Airlines. New Rapid Rewards. Unlimited reward seats and no blackout dates. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Number one in quality tires and expert auto service. And by Steak and Shake. Life needs flavor. The Rockies and the Cardinals met in May, late May. The Cardinals won game one, 10 to three. Both starters were knocked out early. Big day for Colby Rasmus. He went four for four with a couple of triples. Cardinals win game one. Not so good in game two. Jaime Garcia had his rough outing and it was all Colorado Rockies. Gave up 11 hits, 11 runs in his three innings of work and a big offensive day by the catcher, Ionetta. Couple of home runs, six RBIs and four hits. As the Rockies won 15 to four in game two. Cardinals won a close one in game three. Kyle Loach, tonight's starter, began that game. John Jay contributed a home run. Rasmus had another home run later on, but Kyle Loach, the winner, six solid innings as the Cardinals took game three, four to three. And we are ready for the first game of this three-game series. Loesch is ready for Dexter Fowler, and the first pitch is swung on and fouled off. Another nice crowd. Continue to fill up as we had some rain earlier today. And folks just getting word that it's going to be a nice night here at the ballpark, and they are filing in. Important series for the Cardinals. They're all important from here on out. That might be an important indication right there. That pitch clearly outside, but it was down. Both these pitchers need this umpire to call the pitch down, particularly Cook. Sam Holbrook, our home plate umpire tonight. Joe West is crew. He's the third base umpire tonight. Chad Fairchild at second and Paul Schreiber at first. Loesch backs him off the plate, two and two. Kyle Loesch, last three outings, not so good. Yeah, and, and you know, the ball club is really concerned about that finger. He says it's fine. So I gave him a couple extra days rest. Everything looks good so far. Loesch strikes out Dexter Fowler. Here is the Rockies lineup. Be careful in the middle. Carlos Gonzalez having a bit of an off year. Cargo still at 280. Tulowitzki and Helton in the middle of that lineup. Seth Smith had some big nights against the Cincinnati Reds. And Nelson Ionetta and Cook against Kyle Loach. He's got to keep the ball down. We talk a little bit about the finger issue. That's allowed him some extra rest. And I know he wasn't happy about it. But at this stage of the year, it really should help. And Kyle has, as, like I said, last time he pitched against the Rockies, it was in Colorado. He pitched well, won that ball game. Really has had his trouble since. Fly ball to right. Berkman backing up. Makes the play out number two. The Cardinals defense. Tenth in the National League and fielding percentage. Holiday back in the lineup. Jay in center, Berkman in right. Breeze for Carl Schumacher and Pujols along the infield. And Molina and Kyle Loesch, the battery, are Dobbs Cardinals defense. And Holiday back in the lineup. That's always a good sign. And he's hit well against Cook and his former teammates very well. Traded for the gentleman that's at the plate that's really having a down season compared to the monster year he had a year ago. Still has 16 home runs, 60 RBIs. But he's 56 points below last season's average. He's at 16 home runs. He had 34. He's at 60 RBIs. He had 117. We see the wide plate again on pitch one. Not that wide. <laughs> Still a very good ball player and really, if you think about it, after. Colorado couldn't come to a contract arrangement with Matt Holiday. They got a good player in return. Sure did. That should be a strike. Two one pitch to Carlos Gonzalez. Fouls it off.
Gonzalez is one of those typical five tool guys they talk about. He has a strong arm in the outfield. And nine outfield assists this year. Runs well, 16 stolen bases. Another changeup. 26 a year ago. You know, last year he finished third in the National League MVP ballot, won both the Silver Slugger and the Gold Glove, and was voted as National League Player of the Year. In the fifth Rocky to win a National League batting title. Another changeup out in front. And I like to see Loesch using this changeup in the first inning. I think it's a pitch maybe he's gone away from a little bit too much. Yeah, and, and with the finger issue, sometimes that affects his slider. You know, Dave Duncan, you know, when he had his breakthrough year, he won 15 ball games. You know, got him to concentrate on throwing the sinker. Cardinals begin action four games behind the Milwaukee Brewers after losing two out of three. But the good feeling of having won that last game I think lingers a bit Al. That was really I think a good way to end that series. The Cardinals played very well yesterday. Pool holes with four hits. It out rough but settled in and had a nice start. Like Westbrook you know really pitched well but the Cardinals didn't get the support. Carpenter did. Or a strike zone. Well, the strike zone that was wide shrunk in a hurry, didn't it? Two or three pitches in that at bat could have gone Kyle Loesch's way, but ends up being a two out walk to Gonzalez. One more thing here is set up outside, and by the fact that Molina has to reach him back, it kind of sells the umpire that, you know, it's, it's, it's a ball. But isn't it amazing? The umpire looking over that inside shoulder, and that's the pitch they usually miss the most. Well, I think that makes sense because they're they're looking at it so intently they can make that comment that Doug Harvey always used to say, son, that missed by a sixteenth of an inch. Son was what I remember. Yeah. I'm not then your you, son. Then you stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hall of Famer. Low strike and strike zone all over the place here in the first inning. And sometimes umpires have to get loose too. That is true. Tulowitzki is not the kind of guy that you want to give him an extra strike. Outstanding hitter. Very good power. Really just a good all around play. Big man for a shortstop. Joins Albert Pujols and the only National League players to finish in the top five of MPP voting in both 09 and 10. Of course, Albert's been there every year. Seems like. Tulowitzki has hit Kyle Loesch very well in his career, batting average of 400. Change up. And a good pitch, and he does offer at it. Molina tags him. Two strikeouts in the inning for Kyle Loesch. Cardinals with their first turn at bat when we come back.
in downtown St. Louis. And here is the Cardinals batting order brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Raphael Furcal, John Jay, and Albert Pujols in the first. Followed by Holiday Berkman Freeze, Molina Schumacher, and Kyle Loesch. And they'll face a pretty good sinker baller in Aaron Cook. He is ready for Furcal. How about the way Furcal started out the game last night? Well, I'd like to see that again. 27th time in his career that he's had a leadoff home run. Third home run this year. Hard to do that against a pitcher like Aaron Cook. Well, they're saying that Aaron Cook, and he has allowed only four home runs. He's only making his 12th start. He had a fractured finger in spring training. But they say he's getting off to slow starts. And a tough play, and he half rolls at the first base at Todd Elton. That was an odd looking play, but it got the job done, and he's all smiles. And when you're a sinker ball pitcher, you know you, you know you get a lot of ground balls, so you got to field your position. You know, that was fun. Seth Smith, Dexter Fowler, Carlos Gonzalez in the outfield, Nelson Tulowitzki, Ellis, and Todd Elton on the infield. Chris Ionetta, the catcher, and Aaron Cook, our pitcher. And one more look at that last play. Bounces off the mound, dives for it, and then from a prone position, tries to reach in and throw it, and that's all the muscle he had. But it was enough to get it to. To help. Hard to follow through from that position. Yeah, yeah. Nice look on our Plaza Tire Foxmo. A ten of hitters have hit for a very high average against Cook. Tough grounder handled by Nelson, the third baseman. Throws out John Jay. So two ground ball outs. Not unusual against Aaron Cook. Aaron Cook is. You know, a very good comp competitor. They say he's a slow starter, and sometimes he's been so slow that he gets beaten those early going. Velocity is down on that sinker. He's down about two to four miles an hour, and so he's developed a slow curveball as a new pitch. Still will throw a slider. Albert Pujols takes the sinker low. So you see that sinker now. It's like 88 to 90 right. instead of instead of 92-93. It's interesting you look at the numbers of Cook and you mentioned the disabled list for him. He has more walks than strikeouts. Very unusual. Paints the corner on Albert. He's, you know, he's one of these guys been battling. He's the longest tenured uh, Rockies pitcher. Assistant may will get into double figures and wins. Is their franchise leader in wins but at 71? He's their Bob Gibson. He's their Bob Gibson. Except he's about 180 wins away from him. Two two count now to Albert. Big night yesterday. Four hits. And a full count here in the bottom of the first. What a difference it makes when Albert swinging the bat like he did last night. 33rd time of his career that he's had a four hit night. And every one of those balls in that game in case you missed it. Were hit very, very hard. See, they got three infielders on the left side of the infield. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. 1 2 3 inning for Cook. No score through one.
Rockies and the Cardinals game one here on a Friday night in August our Toyota keys to the game last three outings for Kyle Loesch pitch count has been down unfortunately he hasn't been able to get past that fifth inning seems as if the Cardinals brain trust just didn't want to allow him to stay in too long before things started to snowball on him Al and right. I think the finger may have something to do with it but there were games where he really wasn't sharp and they just took the opportunity to get him out early. Yeah and and as I said you know he's maintaining the finger is not a problem not an issue. Well club kind of thinks it possibly is but Ricky don't you believe that at this stage if you got a couple extra days rest it only can be beneficial. Absolutely. Fly ball to center field. Get fairly deep. No trouble for John Jay. That retires Todd Help. I think you talk about the rest, Al. I think sometimes it gets into the area of that's what you need, but it's not what you want. Correct. I think everybody takes pride in taking the ball every fifth day or when your turn is and you got skipped. But Nobody's going to ask for those days. No. Or. Pitching coaches would prefer you didn't ask for That's them. right. They don't want you to ask for them even if you need them. That's the <laughs> irony. So far, so good for Kyle Loesch. Seems to be responding. He looks pretty sharp here. Again, we'll have to watch for that strike zone. And does he get that pitch there? All night long. 0-2 to Seth Smith. Of course, that could be troublesome if, if Cook you know, gets that pitch also. Ball to Albert to his right, flips to Loesch. And a good start for the 32 year old right hander. Two 32 year olds going at it tonight. You can follow every cards game through Game Connect on FoxSportsMidwest.com. Watch the game on TV. You can also join the conversation about the game on Twitter, track trends, and stats. Game Connect brought to you by Jack in the Box. Find it at FoxSportsMidwest.com. Seems funny that somebody other than Ian Stewart is playing third base. But Stewart was sent down today. And he's been up and down three different times with Chris Nelson getting to play third base. Hard ground ball. Handled by Schumacher. Another one, two, three inning. This time it's Kyle Loesch on to the bottom of the second.
Again, when the Cardinals score six, you can get 25 cent drinks the next day, all day at On the Run at Mobile. That's any 20 ounce coffee, fountain, or frozen drink for just a quarter. We're serious. Cardinal fans looking forward to this. Matt Holiday back in the lineup. And he takes the first delivery from Aaron Cook low. And he likes hitting against his former teammates. 378 career batting average against the Rockies. Kind of a freak injury. Well, it's hard for me to believe a 40 pound weight could hurt this guy. <laughs> Must have been picking it up with his little finger. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's not so much the weight, it's sometimes the angle, the leverage, and, you know, reaching and, and not using your legs or something, but tweak something in his lower back, and we're glad to see him back in that lineup. How important being healthy is to a guy like Holiday who has such a violent swing. He uses a lot of his sure. body when he swings. A lot of torque. Round ball to the left side. Tulowitzki is very solid at shortstop. Four straight retired now by Cook. And the Cardinals haven't gotten one out of the infield, and that's really his deal. 71% ground ball ratio in his career. And that's a nice stat to have if you pitch in Colorado. No doubt about it. He wanted to get all sinker ball pitchers. Of course, Berkman has hit Cook very well in his career. But something's got to give. You know, he really struggles against left-handers. Berkman just loves to hit against him. Switch hitters are really seems like it becomes more extreme low ball hitter from the left side. He tries to elevate the ball and get him out. And from the right side, the more high ball hitters. See if he stays up on Berkman. Changes the eye level there. No matter what way you go, Al, part of pitching and part of hitting is whether or not the pitcher is able to change that eye level. Go high, then low, right. high, then low. Make the adjustment tough. The 2 1. Work on both sides of the plate, you know, and. You can see, you know, he's throwing a sinker down away. Just hope he'd roll over on it and a little ground ball to second. 3 1 is hit hard to center field. Back goes Fowler, and it's off the top of the wall. Lance Berkman almost left the yard. And he'll have to settle for a one out double. That ball went a long way to center field and just about carried out of here. Berkman and Pujols are now tied for the league lead in home runs at 28, and Lance almost untied it. But only fitting that guy that hits him so well would be the first one to get a ball up in the air, and that ball is just down right in his wheelhouse. Gives it a ride. Dexter Fowler misconnects, but it would have been a double. David Fries with an opportunity to give the Cardinals the lead here in the bottom of the second inning. Yadier Molina bats next. Cook is set and the pitch. We know, we know Dave, uh, David really didn't play very much last year, I guess to about June, but he had an un unbelievable ability that you know, about 60% of his RBIs last year came in his first at bat. I we'll hope that trend continues here. The second baseman kind of keep an eye on Berkman so he could shoot through that second base area. Does like to hit the ball the other way. And that's exactly what he does. Shoots one to right field. Berkman rounds third and he's coming off. Good arm and right. We're going to have a play at the plate and he is safe at the plate. He tags the back of the plate. What a slide by Lance Berkman.
think I'd like to see that one again. But with one out, you know how aggressive that Okendo is over at third base. And Gonzalez has a great throwing arm, nine assists already this year. Berkman running hard. He sees the throw, beats him. And Edit misses the tag, and there he just slipes across the, the plate. He must just get a little finger on across there, and he does. Sam Holbrook right on top of it. Lance Berkman, safe at home, safe and secure, New York life. Did you see that strong throwing arm, but he challenged him and come away with the first run of the ball game. Nice going, Hosey. Nice going, Berkman. Nice going, David Freeze. Good execution for the Cardinals. Not a bad throw by the right fielder. Not at all. He short hopped uh, catcher a little bit, and that took a little time for him to gather up the ball and make sure, and then try to play the, the apply the tag, but also allowed Berkman the opportunity to go around the catcher. Just good baseball right there. Oh, he's on both ends. Force the issue, even at this level. Sometimes they'll make mistakes, and there were no mistakes there. Didn't notice how well Todd Helton did it. Making it like he was going to catch the ball on the cutoff from right field. Maybe one mistake is David Freeze yeah. not being at second. Ground ball two set. It should be two and it is. Molina bounces out four six three but the Cardinals strike first here in the series and tonight strong throw from right but Lance Berkman comes in the back door. One nothing Cardinals. RBI base hit for David Freeze, and we're underway here in the top of the third. Kyle Loesch back to work, and strike one to Chris Ionetta, the catcher. He's had some big games against the Cardinals in the past, so be careful with him. 12 homers, 41 RBIs for the catcher. Out number one. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Taco Bell. Right now, $20 admission vouchers to live nation concerts. The great Jack Buck. Hard to think about the history of the Cardinals without thinking about that man. He made so much of it, or you know, was the conduit to the fans for so much of the Cardinal history. I miss him every day. A great friend, and obviously, one not the greatest, as equal to the greatest broadcaster in the history of all sports. And I mean, all sports, he could do it all. First game I ever did on radio, I did with Jack Buck. 
talk about being intimidated in one way intimidated but what a wonderful man and a great teacher and great student of the craft and just thankful that I had that opportunity. Kyle Loesch ahead of Aaron Cook swings the bat fairly well. Batting average at 190. Al Roboski, Rick Horton, and we are joined by Jim Hayes here in the third inning. And we'll get some updates from Jim as we go along. There's a line drive down the right field line, and it's foul. Jim, welcome. Hey you guys. guys. Know that uh, you've had a chance to visit with some of the guys, in particular, the newest Cardinal, Arthur Rhodes. Yeah, Arthur Rhodes uh, picked up as a, a lefty uh, member of the bullpen. Tony LaRusso, you, you were talking about how that'll help Zipchinski a little. Tony said Zipchinski can now be used maybe as a multiple innings guy or a longer guy as we see the strikeout. But Arthur Rhodes said he came here mostly because as he was, you know, watching the news stories and reading some of the articles. He saw Tony LaRusso saying nice things about him. And he figured out of the four or five offers uh, he got upon his release, he's going to go play for a guy who wants him. When he's with Cincinnati, he said he always enjoyed playing in St. Louis, and he has a lot of admiration for the for the fans and the way the Cardinals go about their business. And he pitched well in the division too. Cardinals saw him pitch very well. There's a base hit the other way, and that's the first hit for the Rockies. And he's certainly going to be a help out to have that second lefty. No doubt about it. And a fierce competitor and. A guy that's 41, but still, you know, he's a zombie. And he said, "Well, I thought he I mean, was going to fight Jim." I, there. Th I thought he was too. And Jim sit there and go, "Well, what's the difference between now and 15 years ago?" <laughs> well, he outlined that maybe the fastball isn't as good, but he's got a little bit more experience. But he was quite gonna, a bit of more experience. But he was going to say, "I'll show you how good it is." I like so. that he says. The bottom line is, I don't take, and I'll use the word stuff off hitters. I go after them. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's what I thought is. he said. Yeah. He is. You look at him out there. He looks all business, doesn't he? The Cardinals had uh, taken a few runs at trying to make it work out with uh, with Rhodes. It never did, and he became available. And the Cardinals jumped on the chance. Certainly, they needed another lefty. And with the injury the, to Lance Lynn, the, the bullpen was down a guy. Yeah, but as soon as Tony Larusa heard that he, you know, was put on waivers, he was his radar went up, and he was, I'm sure, telling Mo. That's what we need. And once again, the front office and ownership have stepped up and given this Cardinal team everything they need. Now he's 41, but as uh, Tony LaRusso points out, you're not going to be effective for that long, 19 seasons, unless you have that competitive fire in your belly. And Rhodes still has it. Looking forward to watching him pitch. Maybe we'll see him tonight. 1 1 is hit into left field. Holiday. Back a step, now back in. And he makes the play. Rockies strand a runner. Cardinals lead 1 0.
featuring 1985 National League MVP Willie McGee. It is available to 25,000 fans of all ages, courtesy of Coca-Cola Deerbergs. It's your tickets at Cardinals.com. Skip Schumacher, 8-9-1 for the Redbirds. Schumacher, Loesch, and Raphael for call to face the sinker baller, Aaron Cook. Cook, like Loesch, 32 years of age, and they both had their best year in 2008. Cook was 16-9, and nine, and that was the year that Loesch really came on the scene here in St. Louis when he was 15-6. and six. I like the idea of their third baseman playing in, guarding to get some bunt. I can't think of Schumacher ever button, can you? No, but I can certainly think of him slapping the ball past the third base. Yeah, and that's what I mean. It... <laughs> but he, he was equal to it. <laughs> now, a nice play. Al, are you a genius? Be honest. Well, you're the one that said you can that remember That question's been asked it. quite a bit. It too. has. <laughs> and, we, and we've never got an affirmative, but... <laughs> <laughs> But you're the one that said you can remember him slapping the ball by a third baseman. So nice going and nice going Chris Nelson. And that brings in Kyle Loesch. One of the self-proclaimed <laughs> best hitters on the team. Jim that was a outstanding piece that you and Dan Hyatt. Put Dan together. Hyatt did it. I, well, but I just read it. Well it was it was fun. It was funny. Loesch in case folks missed it. You got to find a way to get it. It was a. I guess a compilation of the opinions of the pitchers. Carpenter Loesch, who's the best one? Very well done. It's a good hitter right there. <laughs> and a close play. Don't know much about this. You know, Chris Nelson, but I'm telling you what, I'm learning real quick. It's pretty good. Nice recovery by, you know, but Carpenter and Loesch were. Great actors in there, funny lines. It couldn't have been serious. <laughs> Those guys give each other a hard time all the time. That's clubhouse humor. I mean, if you don't have a little thin, if you're a little thin skin, look out. And speaking of thin skin, the Cardinals starter tomorrow better not have thin skin when he remembers that he pitched against the uh, Rockies last time and kind of had, had some problems. I want to ask you guys about that because I asked Jaime about that. Obviously a rough outing. He said, "I said, do you look at the tape? Do you look at that and try to take anything away?" And he said, "No. His policy is whatever has happened in the past. They might put a tape together of certain things they want him to work on, but it's not like he's looking back for any guidance as to how to pitch this time. That's in the rearview mirror, and I guess that's the right approach, right?" Well, I'll let you answer, Al. But I would say I would never, ever, ever, even if we'd had the opportunity, look at a tape of a bad game ever. Yeah, I think that's not a. Well, you never pitched a bad game, as I recall. I saw you one. Know, I, I've, <laughs> I've been released you know, before, so we could stop right there. And like Ricky, Ricky saw one, and you know we we started the game, and it was actually in Denver at Mile High Stadium against each other, and neither one of us wanted to talk about it. <laughs> Well, we might tell folks about that a little bit. Please not. Later on. One, two, three inning.
Cardinals. And Al and I will take a look at those as the game goes on. This ball hit deep to right center field, and it is way out of here. No doubt about that as Carlos Gonzalez jumps on the first pitch of the fourth inning to tie this game. That's more indicative of the player he was last year and will be again. Very talented young man his 17th home run 61st RBI and you see the ball up out over the plate and he made Loesch pay for it. That's just raw power right there. Looked like he was sitting on that pitch too. Loesch knew he made a mistake with location. And much better there, but it misses low to Tulowitzki. I wonder if Gonzalez benefited from a nine pitch at bat in the first inning where he ended up walking. The tenth pitch. He was looking for it. I also, I think it was mistaken location. Kyle Loesch keeps that ball down. He, he can have a lot of success. Thing. And, you know the Rockies have to be very disappointed in the season they're having. But I was, you know, you know they hit in a, in a very explosive ballpark and they got some great hitters, to Lewiski being one of them. But they can play some great interior defense. This infield defense is really strong for Jim Tracy. Second best defense in the National League. And as you say, the defense up the middle really makes a difference, doesn't it? Brown sure ball does. freeze. Again, he looks like he loses that ball in the lights. That's the second time we've seen that happen to David Freeze in this series. Here's some of the Rockies' defense we're talking about. Well, this Cook helps his, his own cause here, but Helton's won gold gloves. Chris Nelson has just already made a couple dazzling plays. There, we see Chris Nelson come in again and make a great play. How about Mark Ellis, the newest addition? He's a terrific defender, and so is uh, Tulowitzki. Good to see Todd Helton back and having a very productive season. A couple years there, you know, the numbers were down a little bit. Says something when Albert is very, you know, has respect and admires a, someone like a Todd Helton, and that's both on and off the field. Just a pure hitter, isn't it? Yeah. But like I said, he's won some gold gloves, and you know, and he's been a uh, good in the community. Line drive to center field. Jay goes back. He's near the wall, and he can't get it off the base of the wall. Helton. He's going to have at least two and he'll stop there. That ball was ripped to center field, much like the ball Lance Berkman hit in the second inning. Well, he just jumped on this ball and got over the head of John Jay. Couldn't get back quick enough. Todd Elton really had a great first half. And not that his second half is, is that much worse, but, you know, he just. He was the fourth leading hitter pre All Star break with a 321 average. It's come down to, to 307 before that. Here's the crack of the bat. You get a good idea. Turned all the way around and never got back all the way. Good effort by Jay. Couldn't come up with it. Ball in the dirt, smothered by Molina. It just you know goes to show you that there really aren't that many times 
especially in center field that a ball will get over the head of an outfielder and stay in the park. And we're a lot of times outfielders play so deep and a lot of times Dave McKay recommends that. Or Jim Edmonds always played shallow because he had the ability to go back so quickly and make those great catches. 2-0. And of course he was an exceptional defender, but his philosophy was I could take a lot of hits away by playing shallow and I could still get back on the ball over my head. And most pitchers would say if you hit it over your head, it's my fault. Sure. 3-0 pitch, a breaking ball for a strike. Cardinals Fox Sports, the state of Missouri, teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line. 1 800 quit now. Seth Smith batting 455 on this road trip for Colorado. And they're careful with him. First base open. And two base runners now for Chris Nelson. Nelson, a 25 year old infielder playing third base, has also played some second base. Really, a guy that they were counting on to be the star of the future, but I think what you're saying about Stewart, really puzzling. Ian Stewart hit so well against the Cardinals, and you mentioned they sent him down two or three times last, this year. Last three years, I think he's had 54 home runs combined, but this is a regular as as 25 home runs one year, 60 plus RBIs a couple years in a row. This yeah. is a, a, a regular everyday player that for some reason. And I think they I think it was it something it was it was over a hundred. Hundred at bats. I don't know if he didn't have a home run. So they sent him out his third time. They sent him out and Chris. Nelson has been up and down when he's at Colorado Springs this year. He's a 313 hitter with 12 home runs, 55 R RBIs. Add that to his two home runs and nine RBIs here in the big leagues. Sometimes you need an opportunity, don't you? He has one here. There are times when players get that opportunity, they're even better than they thought they were. Ball hit long and foul. It wouldn't be the first player out that actually had better numbers in the big leagues. Not, I never really looked at the numbers of George Brett in the minor leagues, but I've heard from people that he became a better hitter in the big leagues. He probably wasn't there in the minor leagues very Do long. You know when when yeah he wasn't there long, but I want I I think Jack McKeon was his first manager, and George was very young, and he was relegated to catching in the bullpen. Hmm. Now that's that's wasted <laughs> waste of you know why would you ever have a teenager or a 20 year old doing that at the major league level. Good pitch for Loesch retires Chris Nelson out number two. And, and obviously you know it's, it, it took another manager you know but Jack McKeon who you know is a great baseball mind and evaluator. Didn't see what uh, somebody else saw or what the potential was with with George Brett. Did you see Cookie Rojas in in Florida? I did. Had a great visit with him. Cookie, a great royal, and I remember when Cookie was in spring training with the Cardinals. One one. one I didn't year. realize till talking with him that he'd be, been traded. I believe he was. He was with us in spring training, and he didn't didn't make the ball club, and and I think we sent him. I want to say if that's where he got went to Kansas City. And I think he went to Kansas City then and then became a, a big fan favorite there and had some big years. He was asking me if I'd seen the Kurt Flood documentary. And I believe he may have been a part of one of those deals where they both at least played for Philadelphia too. One and oh to Ionetta. Truck tells us Al that George Brett hit 281 in the minor leagues and quite a bit better in the big leagues. Sure. Slider for a strike. Good pitch there. Nice break from Kyle Loesch. Trying to get out of the fourth inning. He's given up one run. That was on a solo home run by Cargo to lead this off. 414 feet. A no doubter. 
Todd Helton doubled off the center field wall. A walk to Seth Smith. Two outs. Facing Ionetta now three and one. I think that uh, year. Talking about George Brett kind of being stuck in the bullpen. It's the same year that. Bruce Del Count. Count. Uh, Kent. Del Kent. I think it was. Uh, went something like. 64 days without throwing a pitch. <laughs> you can stay real sharp. You right? had a lot of rest. And he had Bruce down there. He also had a uh, an old Joe Horner. And I mean that respectfully. But, sure. You know. How about to have George Joe Horner break in? Mm. So George Brett got uh, he, he he fell out how to. How to be a big collector real well. Aaron Cook. Pretty good with a bat in his hand. And he takes ball one from Kyle Loesch, and Loesch needs to bear down here. Bases loaded. Two outs. In the fourth. It's fine to walk those guys as long as you get this third out. And you should do it against your counterpart. A bloop to right. This could be trouble. In comes Berkman on the run. He makes the play. He read that very well. Good jump by Berkman. One to one. Bottom of the fourth next. That'll be this Sunday. 12,000 fans ages 15 and under will receive a fair honoring Stan Musial with paid admission. For tickets, visit cardinals.com. Plenty of good seats available this weekend. Beautiful skies here in St. Louis. Looks like the Southwest here, doesn't it, Al? All I know is there's no rain. It ain't the rain. Later tonight, which it's going to, but stay away now. And I think we do. We have clear skies. John Jay came in batting three for three off a of Cook, rounded out to third the first time. Batting average at 296. He's holding steady right around the 295 mark. And he hit 300 last year in his rookie season as a Redbird. Now those seven home runs kind of sneak up on you, don't they? They do. Surprising power. When you go through those pitchers' meetings, they talk about a hitter. A manager will say, "We're going to pitch this guy that way, this way," and they'll they'll say, "Well, he's got occasional power." That means you just know that he can. If you make a mistake, run into one. 
why you have to always respect anybody stand in that batter's box for the bat. You look at uh, Bob Gibson. Ground ball up the middle to Lewitsky has good range, good arm. Throws out John Jay out number one. Tomorrow on Toyota Cardinals Live, it's the weekend roundtable. We're bringing our experts together for a lively conversation about the rest of the season. You're not going to want to miss this. That's Toyota's Cardinals Live tomorrow at 5.30 on Fox Sports Midwest. Talk to Gibby. Gibby would tell you, you know, I mean, there were times, you know, I just, I took too many hitters for granted. You know, mm -hmm. that eight place shortstop and, and I just threw the ball up there and all of a sudden, you know, darn, you know, he caught and he walked into one. But I'll guarantee you they were they were solo shots. One and one to Albert Pools and a base hit to right field. Albert's one for two. Albert with a base hit. NL active leaders in batting average. Three players on top of that list, all here at the ballpark. Albert Pools at 328. Now that's like, you know, that's career batting average, right? And a minimum, minimum of 3,000 plate appearances. Of course, Albert and Todd Helton both have reached the 2,000 hit level with their original team. And only 46 players have done that in the history of the game. And they're both standing at first base right now. A lot of hits over there. And there are going to be a lot more. Love the swing of Matt Holliday. Every time he lets it rip, you just have a sense that something good might happen. He has such good power the other way. Really isn't a ballpark in baseball that can hold him to any field when he gets a hold of it. And he rarely gets cheated. Facing Cook, as well as all the Rockies pitchers. Been batting 400 in his last five games. Albert, the runner, not going. Ground ball to short. To Lewinsky. The second for one and on to Todd Helton. And another inning ending double play. That's what Cook does so very well.
Very good ball game, one to one. Our AT&T trivia question: Who is the first Cardinal to have two plus home runs and four or more RBIs in the same game against the Rockies? Hmm. Let me think. The favorite of our truck, Tom Pagnozzi. There's any way they can ever get his name on the air, face, video. What did Tom do this time? Hit some home runs, got some hits, and he's here at the ballpark, I understand. And they're not showing him yet? Really, we missed Pags. Line drive, handled by Schumacher. And I'm a little disappointed that we're not seeing Matt Pagnazzi here tonight. He yeah, is in the Rockies organization, but he got sent down. Sent down, I guess, right after the All-Star break or something like that. And, and of course, Tom is very, very generous and moves down in Fayetteville and big, big supporter of Arkansas baseball and many others with Pagnazzi charities down there. A lot of, a lot of ball players could take an example from, from uh, Tom Pagnazzi. Coaching. Never hurts to have another pair of eyes, you know, try to oversee something, get a feel, you want to move defensive positioning. Her call charges it, gets the right hop, and throws out Mark Ellis. Two kick outs here for Loesch in the fifth inning. And just six hits in this ball game. Pitchers. Doing a very nice job so far. Take the Cardinals with you wherever you go this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Cardinals game live or on demand on your favorite computer and your favorite devices. Visit Cardinals.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Your favorite mobile devices. What's that, a bag phone for you, Al? I mean, that, you, you have a cell phone, right? What's that? Oh, we'd love to tease you about that, don't we, Al? Tell you one thing, I got a, I got a new BlackBerry, and I feel like my hands are too big. They're just too sensitive. You're learning, though, Al. That's good. Good inning for Kyle Loach. The Rockies game two of the three game series. Jaime Garcia looking for a little revenge after the Rockies beat up on him in Colorado. He's 10 and 5. Coverage begins at 5 30 on Fox Sports Midwest. He's playing at home. He's pitching at home this time. That should be a difference. It is a big difference for whatever reason, but we hope his trend of being an outstanding pitcher at home continues. 
And then we'll figure out the road, the road problems. But you know that ERA got a skewed because of the game and no doubt in, in Colorado and was left out there to take a beating. Line drive slicing foul off the bat of Lance Berkman. Berkman doubled and scored in the second inning. And looking ahead for the rest of this series, we will have Jason Hamill and Garcia in game two. Then Edward Jackson will throw the final game against the Rockies. Then the Cardinals will go to Pittsburgh, Westbrook, Carpenter, and Loesch again against the Pirates. Slight shift. You would think they'd be pitching a little more inside, but so they can throw the ball up and away. Not as pronounced as some other teams exactly. will do. Watch out. One three zero for the Rockies. One three zero for the Cardinals. Rockies have left five. Cardinals have not left a runner yet. A couple of double plays. Lead off walk for Berkman. Time for our schnooks this date in history. We'll see if this has something to do with Tom Pagnazzi. He was probably there August 12th 1988 Joe McGrain pitched a one hitter beat the Cubs at Wrigley four to nothing Cubs only hit came in the second inning and what a year Joe McGrain had that year in 1988 ERA champion with just five wins on the season five and nine record Joe had such movement a little bit like Jaime Garcia. Yeah of course. Uh, I don't think I ever heard the word mechanics. Until Joe McGreen started using it. And Joe does a very nice job on MLB. He Network. certainly does. We could tell a lot of McGreen stories. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't have time, Al. <laughs> we just do not have time. I just love Joe. 1 0 to David Freeze. Very smart player. <laughs> Uh, I just don't know where to go with that, Al. When Kelly said Joe loves Joe. <laughs> That's why I started laughing. And me too. There goes the runner, Berkman, and on the ground to the third baseman. Tough play for Nelson. Charges, throws off balance, gets his man, and the wonder Al Roboski thinks this guy can pick it. Yeah, I'm a wow. believer. That's a tough play. Very nice play, just a little swinging bunt, and David Freeze running hard down the line. The off balance throw. Mm. Good thing that Berkman didn't try to get two bases out of this because Helton was ready to gun him out if he tried to go to third. Close play at first. He is out by a step, and that could be. A key play in this game if the Cardinals aren't able to get anything across here. First and second, nobody out. It'd be a whole lot better here for Yadier Molina. Molina working on a 14 game hitting streak, bounced into a double play in the second. Yeah, one more would tie his career high. And set a new one tomorrow. And I'm going to quickly check on Mr. Ugla here. And Ugla. 31 game hitting streak on the line for the Braves. He's two for two. Well, he set the new Atlanta franchise mark. I guess the Boston Braves is something like 35 set back in 45. Braves are leading the Cubs eight to three and that game is in the sixth inning. And that gentleman is bringing Al Roboski his ice cream. I wish. Milwaukee has a three nothing lead at home against the Pirates.
potentially walk here. Jim Tracy deciding in the fifth inning. He just does not want Skip Schumacher to drive in a run with the option of pitching to Kyle Loesch. You like this move? I think Kyle's going to beat the move. I think Kyle's going to come up with a big base hit right here. Well, that's a decision for Mr. Tracy. Christian Day at the ballpark tomorrow, Saturday, August 13th. Stick around after the game. Hear from featured speaker Adam Wainwright, plus some other Cardinals. You also hear some from some Rocky players as well. 21st annual Christian Day at the ballpark. Great seats still remain. Cardinals.com slash Christian Day. These for more info. Decisions like this, walking the eighth place hitter to bring up the pitcher with two outs. You know, it's only as good as the execution of your players. It was a good move. Aaron Cook executes. Gets the ground ball he wanted. We're through five in St. Louis. Jumbo breakfast platter for just $2.99 at Jack in the Box at participating restaurants. One to one, top of the sixth inning. It's been all Kyle Loesch and Aaron Cook, 32 year old right handers. And it's really good to see Al Kyle Loesch having a strong outing. That's right. You know, not only having a Easy five innings, getting that pitch count up to 73, and let's see if, see him continue for a few more innings. A couple of tough hitters that he will be facing here in the sixth inning: Tulowitzki, Helton, then Seth Smith to follow. So far, it's been the left-handed batters that have gotten all three of the base hits against him. To Lewitsky at 301. National League All Star starting shortstop with power. Jams him there. To Lewitsky, when he gets hot, I don't have to think if there's any player in baseball when hot that's better than Troy To Lewitsky when he's hot. I mean, he gets, I mean, just unconscious out. Well, he's an eight game hitting streak right now, but you know what you're, what you're talking about. It's right. He's at 284. Left. He's at 350. You talk about building a ball club. You know, a guy like Tulowitzki is kind of like to be the centerpiece, especially because he can play shortstop, one of the most demanding positions in the game. And then he's just a big body, but very athletic and excellent in all aspects of the game. The one two. 
fouled off. Heard people talk about him and his attitude towards baseball and some of the Rockies coaches that I talked to and their media folks say that one of the ways they would define Tulowitzki is a guy that has no interest in the world other than baseball. I mean he's just so focused on the game in, in a good way. I mean there are times where they try to get him to go out hunting and play golf do something different but he just he just eats and sleeps and plays baseball. That's it. High fly ball. And Kyle Loesch may have gotten away with one there. Wow. Just a couple little notes on Tulowitzki. You know, he hit the fifth cycle. A couple years ago, he hit, hit for the cycle. And a couple years before that, he turned the 13th unassisted triple play in Major League history. Kind of a one extreme to the other, isn't it? Just a high fly ball. And the extreme I'm thinking about with Tulowitzki is that one particular month that he had. It was really even more than a month, but he's just a guy that just, when he gets on a tear, it's just ridiculous how like good he can be. Well, September of last season, he hit 322 with 15 home runs and 40 that's, RBIs. That's the number I'm looking for. 15 home runs in a month, 15 <laughs> times six is 90. That's a pretty good year. Yeah. I'm well, at 40 RBIs times six. Oh, and two to Helton. I wonder if the comeback player of the year is an award that guys really like to get. Ask Carpenter. Carpenter, he's won it twice. Now you may may enjoy it the one time, but you usually don't want to win it twice. You know, you're proud of the comeback, but not the fact that you had to have a down year or a bad year to get there. Backhand by Pujols. Tough play. Stands up. Throws out help. Well, I would think there would be a difference. Al, if you came back from an injury and sure. came back and did well, and then if they Carpenter. presented the award to you and they said, well, congratulations, last year you were really terrible, and this year you were good. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I'm not sure I'd like that. Yeah, I, I think that it usually goes to a guy that was injured. And so our early candidate for comeback player of the year for next year, we're going to, I'm voting for Adam Wainwright right now. Okay, now that's a good, that's a good scenario, and I'm sure Adam, Adam will say, I'll, I'll take that right now. And Adam will be speaking tomorrow at the Christian Day at the ballpark following the game. Adam was playing catch today for a very long time out in right field before it started to rain here, and that's just maybe great steps. to see. Nice play by Schumacher, diving to his right, helping out his pitcher. It's that three line drives is snared. Can't wait to see that guy on the right pitch again. Schumacher. Loves it.
Budweiser Beer Stein. First in an exclusive collection brought to you by the Cardinals and Budweiser. Available to 25,000 fans ages 21 and up. That's Saturday, September 3rd. For tickets, visit Cardinals.com. First pitch low to Furcal. It's at 234 coming in tonight against our four St. Louis. And this might help. Lead off base hit for Furcal. The Cardinals. Cardinals need need to start scoring some runs here. One to one game, bottom of the sixth inning. You don't want to let the Rockies hang around. And the Cardinals not only have a base runner, but some speed at first in for call. And now we like not only the average of for call, and he's going to hit better than 234, I sure. think. But but he has solidified the defense. Yeah, and and you know he has been. You know he's he's hitting 16 in the last 20 ball games. You know at 263. You know, and he's just trying to get his feet wet. You know, he, he missed extend a lot of time with a fractured left thumb and a strain left oblique. Nice bunt to third base, and it goes foul, and it does <laughs> stay foul. Well, you saw Nelson, you know, he allowed it to go foul, then the ball got by him, then he ran after it to make sure it didn't roll back fair. So, third baseman, you see his feet there, now he tracks it down and makes sure that. Picks it up in foul territory. He looks very smooth at third, doesn't he? Yeah, looks. Make sure it goes foul, then you pick it up just in case. Kind of reminds me of Jerry Royster, you know, that you know how you had that tangle with Jerry Royster yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the video of You're not gonna let me forget that, are you? Oh, I loved your temper. I was saying to the umpire in a calm way, sir, don't you think you should reconsider your call? Perhaps you were mistaken. Um, that's the way I remember it. I got the video now. Oh, and one to Jay. And in case folks missed that, that was a little blow up. They actually had Cal Eldred blowing up at an umpire, too. So <laughs> pregame producer Brad Strobinger thought it would be fun to just show both of us losing our brain there for a moment. I'm but sure that would never happen to you. I'm Al. sure glad there's no footage. <laughs> yeah, we trust have. me. There's some footage that they can't show. <laughs> one and one to Jay. Big hole on the right side. Cook steps off. Big hello to Sarah Kelly, 83-year-old diehard. Cardinals fan watching every game from Madisonville, Kentucky. Big Yachty Air Molina fan. Lance Berkman was off with a hit and run in the fifth inning. The Cardinals really haven't run a lot this year. 40 stolen bases as a team. The Rockies have 80. Just by comparison. Well, I think it's you know now with for call and you got John Jay playing, you get a little more speed in the lineup. And there's a line drive down the left field line. Trouble if it's fair, and it is foul. Mm. Couldn't have been by much. It's beyond our sight lines. No arguments. And. Ooh, clearly foul, but not by much. Mark McGuire was half joking the other day. He goes, now we got some speed, and Tony doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked a lot about him last night towards the end of the game and the job that he and Mike Aldretti have done with the hitters here this year, and they have really elevated. And, of course, Albert's having a bit of an off year for him. But collectively, this team is good with runners in scoring position. They've been fundamentally good. Well, you touched on too. The walks are up and the strikeouts are down. And a base hit to right field for Jay for call round second, and he's going to respect the arm of Carlos Gonzalez, and I don't blame it. That ball was hit hard by John Jay, so a couple of hits to start the six for the Cardinals. And that is our Nissan drive of the game. 
delivered by John Jay. His first hit of the night. Hit the ball too hard. McCall had no chance to go to third. With Gonzalez's arm. Such a weapon, isn't it? I mean, what a difference yeah. that is. Cardinals have runners at first and third. Albert, we know, has hit into a lot of double plays this year, but if you're first and third and that happens, you still have the lead. Right. Albert leads the major leagues with 25 times. He's hit into a double play, but he's concentrating on the base hit or more. Inside strike. Who holds at a base hit to right field in the fourth inning, and he struck out in the first. That pitch right there probably would have produced a ground ball to third. Perfect location for that, right? Right, and that's what Cook's trying to do. Down and in sink. Albert's trying to elevate it, get it in the outfield, hit it hard, square it up. I'm called very late by our home plate umpire at Albert's request. And one of the things I like about Albert is you always see him point to him and say, "My fault," and I did that. And he really acknowledges he's he's not doing any gamesmanship with the pitcher. Well, and but, he, but he didn't do it. The umpire granted it. He's asking. And the umpire has to grant it. He just doesn't want the pitcher mad at him. <laughs> And Edo with a nice block there. Ball gets by him, and first base would be open, but all runners would go up. They'd probably walk, walk, but with Holiday on deck, so what? He's not sure that's a very good move anymore. You're uh, right. A lot of clubs are thinking twice about it with Holiday and Berkman as protection. There's a line drive, and it's not handled by the second baseman. Goes into right field, and the Cardinals are going to take the lead as Furcal scores from second base on the hard hit ball to the right side by Albert Pujols. Two to one, Cardinals. Well, you see that Mark Ellis, who's an outstanding defender, got sideways with it. He's trying to play back. The ball's there. He's going to go there and. Didn't get in front of it, slowed it down, and that really helped the Cardinals get some extra bases. So Pacal will score easily. And John Jay is able to go to third. And I don't have any problem with that being nope. called a base hit. No, that ball was scorched. And take a couple steps to his left. Came up on him a little bit. Cardinals want more. Matt Holliday grounds it to the third base side, and it's fair over the head of the third baseman, Nelson, into the corner. Jay scores, Pujols to third, Matt Holliday. And the Cardinals now lead 3-1. to one. The feeling just about that time for the Cardinals to erupt with some runs and four straight hits to lead off the sixth inning. And it must be because Tom Pagnozzi's in the booth. That's right. I mean, that right there, that ball bounces. If it doesn't bounce over Chris Nelson's head, he turns it into a double play. Bounces over his head. Cardinals get a run and put the two boppers out on second and third and Berkman coming up. It's never easy when you got these middle three. And speaking of the great Tom Pagnozzi, here's his career numbers. 44 home runs. I thought he hit at least 45. At 18 stolen bases. 200 first in that court. Remember, that the, the, remember, the, the, remember the year he had, remember when he had nine and the record's 10? And, and I think he took, got thrown out about 10 times trying to get the record. Wrigley Field was was a thing of beauty. Intentional walk here to Lance Berkman to load the bases for David Freeze. And you talk about Tom Pagnozzi, and then he shows up. 
those bags and Steve Uline used to run Bud Sports. They must have kicked him out of the truck. What do you think, Al? I think he was. I think he was producing earlier. Oh. Chance for some more runs for the Cardinals. They've already scored two here in the sixth inning. And I think Tom Pagnazzi is the good luck charm. Absolutely. We missed you, Pags. You haven't been around enough. You haven't been around enough. David Freeze, RBI base hit. Got the Cardinals on the board in the first day, and here's a chance to really open it up. Nobody out for the Cardinals in the sixth. Freeze takes the first pitch low from Cook, and you could just tell he is on the edge right here, Al. He's one pitch away from a lot of trouble. Escalona, big right hander, good arm, very good arm down there in the bullpen. And this could be Cook's last batter. Ball two. Outfield plays deep for free. Shades him a bit to the right side. I would agree with that. David has good power. Good power and really to the opposite field. Ground ball to left side. A base hit for David Freeze. And the Cardinals are going to score two more. Pujols. Now Holiday. And the Redbirds lead 5-1. to one. The RBI night for... David Freeze, he's up to 35, but then more than missed more than 50 games with a fractured hand. Really, for a young player, showing an ability to drive in runs, sometimes you need a little luck. And that ball just got through on the left side and plates two. Six straight base runners for the Cardinals in the sixth inning, and things have just fallen apart for Aaron Cook. Mentioned Al, he started the season on the disabled list. He had the fractured finger off to a slow start. Hadn't been pitching well, and it looked like he may have had things figured out here tonight. But the Cardinals are erupting here uh, in you know, the sixth. Ricky, you know, the last two, you know, base hits have been ground balls. Right. But they just found a way to bounce through the infield and high choppers that you don't normally expect. Pretty hard right in front of home plate. Each of them hit right into the dirt at home plate and bounced over the third baseman's head each time. Holiday with his double, and now David Freeze with a base hit. And we don't see that as occurring, you know, on a on a daily basis. Alina showing bunt pulls back. And now he lays down a bunt. And it's going to get the job done. Molina advances Berkman and Freeze. Great form. Talk about getting the ball. He did that with perfect pressure. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, the Pirates look to gain ground in the National League Central as they take on the division-leading Brewers in Milwaukee. Or the Rays head to the Bronx to battle the Yankees as New York looks to keep pace in the AL East. This week's telecast of Fox Saturday Baseball begins at 3 p.m. only on Fox. Check local listings for the game in your area. And a pitch to Schumacher with first base open, but we've got the infield in, so... Hard hit ball that's not right at one of the defenders in the infield. Probably is going to go through. They walk skip intentionally in the fifth inning to pitch to Kyle Loach. Interesting they would choose to pitch to him here. Is it just a matter of saying we want to face Schumacher and Loach instead of Lotion for call? Let's see if Tracy's kind of. Put the mindset out there to pitch around him, see if he might get himself out. Five to one Cardinals. They've already scored four times here in the sixth. The one one. Schumacher. 
Knocker, one for 12 in his career against Aaron Cook. Berkman and Freeze, the base runner. The 2 1. Ground ball to the left side to Lewitsky on the backhand. He's coming home, and he is able to throw out Lance Berkman from deep short. And what a quick throw that was from the all star shortstop. Well, and, and just look at the where he throws this ball from with accuracy. You know, just utilizes that big body to get something behind the throw. And that's another terrific play from Tulowitzki and from this defense. Ninth batter of the inning is Kyle Loesch. He's 0 for 2. Bounced out twice. Chance to add on. And to get some bragging rights in that pitcher's deal. Pitcher's deal that he's got going with Chris Carpenter. Remember he said he was two for two for two away from catching Carpenter, Carpenter right. or catching Carpenter. Carpenter's comment was that when he's at the plate, everybody can tell that he looks more hitterish. Was his word. I'm not making that up. That's exactly what he said, and I don't know if I will agree with him because I, <laughs> I think Kyle looks more. You think he looks more hitterish? He, he looks more hitterish. I just want him to both look pitcherish. <laughs> What the Cardinals need him to do. There's a face hit the right field for Loesch. Kyle Loesch drives in another one. And the Cardinals lead six to one. Take that, Chris Carpenter. And Schumacher goes from first to third. Pitch down away. Look at that little line drive. Acknowledge it, Chris. Come on. <laughs> and now it's a knockout blow as we're going to have a double switch. Cardinals erupt here in the sixth inning. They've already scored five. They lead the Rockies six to one. We'll be right back. Booth question comes from Tim, and Tim's in Wildwood, Missouri. He wants to know, Al Roboski, is there a difference between a cutter and a slider? Well, <laughs> you know, sometimes we think the old-fashioned slider is what today's cutter is, but really, it, it is a little bit less than an old-fashioned slider. Sliders become a real big, almost slurvy, but a, a cutter just has a little bit of movement. It's thrown like the slider. I'm not sure what, he, what Garcia is talking about there. It looked like curveball, right? But cutter, you know, really, you put the fingertip pressure on the index finger, 
And that was one of the reasons why we were concerned about uh, Kyle Loesch and Escalona. Ty Wigginton, part of the double switch, he moves to left field. Edgemer Escalona. Only a fifth appearance, but they say this guy has a big arm. Already more hits than any he's pitched. Good swing there by for call who's one for three he was right on that 92 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. Nice easy motion right kind of slings the ball up there. It does. Isn't that kind of a trademark of a lot of Dominican or sure Latin is. pitchers that. They really have seemed to have rubber arms they throw all the time but they sling the ball up. Ninety four, but way outside. Reminds me of Jose De Leon in his delivery. Mm -hmm. He certainly threw some very nice ball games as a Cardinal. Came up with the Pirates. Had that year where he led the league in strikeouts as a Cardinal. And he also lead the league in losses, and losses one, year. one year. Couldn't see my memory, but that's what I always remember. Oh yeah. And he had the nastiest fork ball I'd ever seen. Had very similar mechanics to Edgemer Escalona. You know the fork ball was the fork ball was really in the 60s was you know where you really jammed it back into your your first and index finger and really take the velocity in it and throw it as hard as you can but with a downward action. Then you the split finger you do it the same fashion but you put it out on your fingertips and get more velocity. To say the, the in the 80s, the split finger pitch became the pitch of, of uh, style or vogue, no doubt. I mean, and Bruce, then now it's the cutter. Now it's the cutter. I mean, Bruce Souter was the first to really throw the great split finger fastball. Then guys started throwing, throwing it harder. harder. Jack Morris, Morris the yeah, throwing 93, 94 miles an hour. Where Bruce Souter's. I can remember asking hitters, I said, what is it about it? It looks like it, you know, looks like a beach ball coming up. And they go, exactly. It looks like a beach ball, and you start your swing, and about the time you get your bat through the zone, the bottom falls out. Hard hit to right by for a call. Back goes Cargo, makes the play just in front of the warning track, but a big inning for the Cargo. They jump out on top of the Rockies, six to one. Cardinal lead without hit the Rockies nine to three and before the game tonight Larry Hughes local basketball standout at CBC High School then played at SLU onto the NBA for 12 seasons throws out the first pitch and it's right on the corner to Alan Craig. Nice to have him at the ballpark today. 
eighth pick in the 98 draft. Outstanding. A local nice talent, in the local NBA talent who had a very good career in the NBA. You bet. Between innings. Trying to tell Dotel how to get that fork ball. And whatever he said, it must have been funny. That's the humor Dotel. we're talking about yeah. for Berkman. That is him. Yeah. Now I'm not, you know, he's not. Not George Carlin or anything, but I mean, <laughs> showing my age here, I guess yes. he's not somebody younger that's funny, but he has just got a loose way about him that I think is really just infected this ball club. And that was part of what John Mozalak wanted to create and bring to the clubhouse. Felt that, you know, it was a little stale, it was a little too stiff, needed to loosen up a little bit. And felt that Berkman would be that type of guy that all not only be a, an effective player, but would provide a little leadership and clubhouse humor. And he's done that and more. And Ontario's done that part. So has Gerald Laird. But you have to say Berkman by far the most. Tough play on the run for David Freed. Close a little credit as he's retired eight in a row. And now you mentioned the double switch that puts Wigginton in the ninth spot, so he'll bat next. He's actually hit Kyle Loesch very well in his career. A little surprised he didn't start this ball game, but Chris Iannetta will bat first. And the pitcher now in Seth Smith's spot. Line drive, base hit over the head. Of for call. Nice effort. Very well hit. That pitch looked down. Wasn't a bad location. See how far that Ralphie missed this. Not real tall, but went as high as he could. By a little bit. So Larry Hughes would have caught that. Yes. And now with Wigginton and his 533 average against. Kyle Lowe's eight for 15. Looks like they're going to go to Jason Mott. Fairly early exit for Kyle Lowe. He looks a little stunned by that. Frankly, so am I. Weeks he has been really just lights out the earn run average now under two. He's not allowed an earn run since June 24th, covering a span of 21 appearances. He's inherited the most uh, inherited runners. Kyle Loesch, you know, I agree, kind of a quick hook, but the way things have gone for Kyle Loesch and Wigginton has big numbers, you guarantee that you keep this a positive outing. 
There's a big swing at the high fastball. And you, you know, and you got a hot reliever right now. So right. I think you can understand all the combinations there. Kyle Lowe should feel very good about his outing today. Six and a third, four hits, one run to this point, two walks, three strikeouts, one home run. You know, we talk about that from the point of view of, a, of the starting pitcher's psyche, different than any other player on the field. You want to leave him with a positive outing because he doesn't get to play again for a week. The right. reliever not, might pitch again next the next day. The batter's certainly going to play the next day, and you'll be able to turn the page and move on mentally. But if the starting pitcher has a bad day or a bad ending because he's in too long, that will gnaw at you for days until you get back out there. Kyle did win on July 30th. He has had some struggles. And only one win in June. So and now you start building that psyche back up, like you said. Very close there. Two and two. Is Jason Mott now found himself a little bit as a pitcher? Oh, I, I think he has. You know, I mean, it's, it's, and the only way you find yourself is to be out on that mound and pitch. But, you know, he's incorporating, he, he knows he pretty much got to just go rear back and let it fly. Like that. 98, take your chances. But, you know, every now and then he has worked on his future. You know, that little breaking ball, a little cutter here and there, and, you know, time's a sinker. But, you know, his forte is just to rear back and just try to overpower something. And when you do it like that, you're doing a pretty good job. One more thing on Kyle Loesch. You don't want a starting pitcher or a pitcher in general that wants to come out of a game. So it's not the worst thing to have him be a little upset. Oh, when yeah. He comes out. I agree. In fact, most managers get frustrated, or all managers, I should say, get frustrated when they can sense a player is looking over their shoulder, oh, that's right. ask him to come out and say, Would you please get somebody out? Now, you don't say it verbally, but with all your body, body language, language, you might say, Get somebody up in a hurry. And then you turn around and look at the bullpen like, hey, where on, where, where's my help? You know, I'm starting to get him into a jam. Well, it's not Kyle Lowe's. It's really none of the Cardinal pitchers. I don't think that guy would last too long in Tony's staff. No. the bench guy that says he would play me or trade me and right. so you put him out there for a week and then you, he he plays himself right off the team. And you go, he can't play. <laughs> Should have kept his mouth shut. You have to be careful what you say. I once yelled at my manager Jim Fergosi for taking me out of a game. We screamed at each other in the dugout. And I said they said in not so many words. Why are you taking me out? And his answer basically was because you stink. That's what he told me. It's exactly what he told me. I can see Fergosi saying, "Yeah, you know." But and, and after he yelled at me for about five minutes, he smiled, patted me on the right, back, right? So that's okay. So I think he liked it. Yeah, I, I think he, you know sometimes managers do like that confrontation. It shows you got a little fight in you. You, know, they don't, you don't want to just you know give up and. And that was never a question for my partner Al Robosk that he had some fight in. Full count to Dexter Fowler. Runner on the move. And it's fouled off over by the Rocky dugout. Nice play by a fan. And dad and gave it to his young son. Nice play. Did some high fives from everybody around him. And he goes and finishes his beer. <laughs> Oh, life can't get any better than that, can sure it? That's not Pat Donson. <laughs> Could be. The three-two again. This ball hit in the air, right center field. Who wants it? John Jay says, "I'll take it." So the numbers close for Kyle Lowe. She is all smiles, and you know what? He should be. Six-one Cardinal.
seventh inning stretch. Cardinals have out hit the Rockies nine to four. And the five run sixth inning really the difference in this ball game. The Cardinals chased Aaron Cook. He's the Rockies starter. Kyle Loesch hoping to win his 10th game of the season. Cardinals are going to have to get through a couple more Rockies frames, the eighth and the ninth. Escalona stays in the ball game. Jay Pujols and Holiday, tough assignment for him. These guys were a part of that sixth inning. The Cardinals batted around for call. Jay Pujols, Holiday, Freeze, and Loesch all with hits in the inning. Jay pops this one up to Lewitsky. Back pedals. One out. And I'm still on that kick, Al. I still think. And I'm going to have to do the numbers a little bit more diligently. Well, I mean, but what Albert would have to hit from here on out to that 300? You, you kind of felt. I'm going to give you a tentatively 360. Right. Rest away. He went four for four yesterday. He's already got he's two for three tonight. 287 now is his career and that year is average. Season high. But he's going to try and do everything he can to help you out. He'll hit his 30 home runs. You would think he'd get it, you know, but a lot for the 30 home runs. Should get 100 RBIs. Big question can he get the 300 out? He is very capable. I just wouldn't count him out of anything. And I know neither would you. Came in basically a 330 plus hitter. Won't get to that degree. But trying to become the first player in the first 12 years to have at least a 300 batting average. 30 home runs and 100 RBIs. Lowest average of his career was last year when he hit 312. Numbers are just incredible when you look at him. And then you think it's to start a career. But Escalona takes a hit away from him. He'll be calling home tonight. Oh, you bet he will. Guess who I got out? He is from Venezuela. But still. They've heard of Albert Pools. Escalona is 6'4, 215. Albert's lowest home run total was in 2007 when he merely had 32 homers. And that year he had 103 RBI. Now that would be the year to compare this season too. What was his bang average? He had 327 that year. Okay, well, there's still a lofty average, but the production numbers are closer than what he's going through now. Al McClellan, he's warming up. He, he true to form that uh, Mott is night is through, and McClellan will take over in the in the top of the eighth. Between innings, Al, we noticed. I don't know if you saw that the Cardinals are trying to get. The attention of the Cardinal bullpen. I, I think the yeah. bullpen phone wasn't working for a moment, and so they were trying to get their attention. And Dave Duncan was frantically trying to get Kyle McClellan up. It just reminded me of the old days in the minor leagues where every pitcher had a signal. Had a signal. There was yeah. no phones. There, there was a hand sign, and it, like yeah. some of them were creative. You had the tall guy, the tall guy, the guy with the, the mustache. The that, guy. They put the hand over your mouth for the mustache guy. You got the short guy. You got the right hander, the left hander, the side armor. They all had their little. You know, symbols. You know, they had some kind of symbol that you knew who it was. I'm afraid to think of what yours <laughs> might have been. Maybe circling the ear with the forefinger. Yeah, that was close. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. It comes McClellan.
on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces, serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. And watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan, welcome. We are so glad you are with us here tonight. Six to one Cardinals. Top of the eighth inning, and Kyle McClellan is the new Cardinal pitcher. Dalzo goes in to play third base and Kyle McClellan who started 17 ball games for the Cardinals did a fine job. But with. The absence of a. At that time a really effective. You know late inning guy. You know, he's. Went back to the bullpen where he made 60 or more appearances the last three years. His seventh relief appearance this year. Lance Lynn kind of filled his spot. We weren't seeing as much as Kyle. But as I say, seven Lance on the disabled list with the oblique muscle strain. Told me it wasn't that severe the next day, but it's still an injury yeah. that you got to be very, very cautious with. Even Especially the ones that aren't severe. And, and look at him, you know, big and heavily oh. muscled he is. So. James Ellis. And Yadier Molina makes the play on the run. How about that? There's some athleticism for you. Well, how about Kyle McClellan bouncing out, doing what he did, but he gave way to his gold glove catcher. But if Yadi wouldn't have got there, Kyle could have made that play easy. One more look. Good jam shot. Yadi sees it. And you hear him calling, calling for the ball all the way. Look, Kyle's right there. He hears his catcher calling for it, and he's the one with the gold gloves. You bet he is. Carlos Gonzalez homered in the fourth inning. The only run off of Kyle Loesch. Strong outing for him. Six and a third. Four hits. One run. Three walks, and three strikeouts for Loesch. 91 pitches out, so he was getting yeah. close to that threshold number anyway. Tony La Russa went to get him, brought in Jason Mott to finish the seventh. Another good job by Jason. Right. I think we know that Kyle could have finished that one off, but made sure it was a positive. He's in line for the victory. How did Kyle McClone get away with that pitch? Mm. Middle, middle. Sometimes it confuses the hitter. Inside out it, pull it. What do I do? Other than foul it off. Argo hit his 17th home run of the year. That was the only run I scored against Loesch. He pitched well. Popped into center field. It's got some height, but not enough distance. Out number two. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals that may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. One of my favorites was activated today before the game. Jason Giambi. Is that right? And Houston Street, their closer, is put on the disabled list. I think they might have made the announcement right before, but it was not in the notes. I was down there talking with Jason, and he was all smiles coming off his rehab. Tough play for Descalzo. Now it's for Call deep in the hole, and he throws it away. Tough play, long throw. Not in time to get to Lewitsky, who runs well. That's going to be an infield hit. Houston Street out with 29 saves up among the league leaders. All right. There you see Descalzo just winning the game a little short. There's that good throwing arm, but a little low. When, you know, Albert, you can just see he's a little cautious. You know, he's kind of sensing those runners, and that's a, another big man right there. Let it go. That's fine. That's Let fine. it go. 
Absolutely, and especially where no further advancement. Dave Duncan out to talk, but the left handed batter. Remember, we got two lefties now, but one of the reasons why they love Kyle McClone in the bullpen is his ability to get left handed batters out. But this is a pretty special one. And he may be giving some time to have the lefty ready for the next left hander that he'll face, too, as Giambi is getting loose on deck. So Zepchinski, whose name is getting much, much easier for me to say since he's been with the club now for a couple of weeks. That first week was tough, Al. Zepchinski. What's so tough about it? It's not really that hard as long as you ignore the R. The R. Take, forget about the R. The two Z's. And I would think he would be very pleased that the Cardinals have signed Arthur Rhodes. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. Tony talking about he could stretch him out a little yeah. bit. Sipsinski. And really his his best outing was his first where he went to right two innings and struck out four. And went six up, six down. Enjoy Jim Hayes's interview with the new Cardinal Arthur Rhodes. Rhodes was, I would say in his interview, Rhodes was very happy to be a Cardinal, very serious about his opportunity and his job, very, very kind of tough sounding to me. Well, you know, he's 41 years of age, 19 years in the business, doesn't throw as hard as he once does, but he still has that persona on the mound. Good curveball from McClellan, and he freezes. Todd Help. Nice job, nice pitch, nice inning for Kyle McClellan. Game recap. Like the way we do that with the buttons. Pretty impressive. I don't know how we do that every night. Kyle Loesch, six in the third innings, one earned run, gave up a home run to Gonzalez. Aaron Cook was sailing along. The Cardinals finally got to him. David Freeze, two for three. Pretty fancy what we could do there. That's Keith Oberman in the truck. Does such a great job. Lance Berkman. Cardinals hoping this is their last time to bat. Berkman, Descalzo, and Molina. Fun to play eight and a half innings, isn't it? Best way to do it. Milwaukee leads the Pirates at four to one. Pirates batting in the eighth. It looks like they have a base runner. I think they just got that one run. There are two outs. McCutcheon at the plate, and runner at second. All kinds of information on our scoreboard here at Bush Stadium. We know everything but the barometric pressure in Milwaukee. 
Well, I didn't know you knew it, so now we know it all. Reds beat the Padres 5-3. to three. There's the scoreboard. There's the runner at second base. There's McCutcheon at the plate. There's the score, 4-1. to one. Not really sure who that guy on second is. I guess we don't know everything. 2-2 two, two to Berkman. Let's hope he scores. Braves beat the Cubs 10 to 4. Dan Ugla's hitting streak was extended one more day. And at least two hits in that game. And it's McKendry, the catcher, who's on second base. And now you know everything. That's 4 2. McHenry must have scored. Now he's Xavier scored. Paul's at the play. And it looks like he traded places. McCutcheon is on second. We got a rally on the scoreboard. We got a rally here at the ballpark. Lance Berkman reaches safely for the fourth straight time. Three times he's walked. There's a Xavier Paul. Four to two now in the top of the eight. Let's go, Pirates. A little double by McCutcheon. Scoring McHenry. All coming with two outs. There's a strike on the corner to Daniel Descalzo. This is his first plate appearance. And uh, some people, Al, just do not get, nor do they like, nor do they understand why people like to scoreboard watch. But I just happen to be somebody that likes to do that. I do oh, too. I always have. And, and you know what? I do it from the first day. Of the uh, yeah, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean. If the Pirates don't win this game, the world's going to come to an end. It's just fun to watch it. No. I mean, you just pick down some of your favorite teams, and you know, now you start this pennant race. About half the teams in baseball still in it as of August 12th. So far, really not you know, really a a lot of interest in the wild card race. That will happen come September. Well, right now it's not. I mean, nobody's really close enough. No, that's true. The feeling that will tighten up some. It'll be on his second or last opportunity to extend his inning streak to tie his career high at 15. Tom McClellan had a very efficient inning. Finished off. Todd Helton, uh, nobody warming up, so looks like he may get a chance to finish this game. Lane has bounced out twice. He had that sacrifice bunt perfectly executed in the middle of that Cardinal five run sixth inning. How's Xavier Paul doing, Al? Um, I don't know what the count is, but he's still at the plate. That's good news. There's a line drive to right. And that retires Yadier Molina for the second out. Standing pitching change in Milwaukee. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. By Bank of America, where ATM deposits are as easy as an infield fly. No deposit slip, no envelope. With Bank of America, member FDIC. And by AT&T. And now I see Dotel has gotten up in the Cardinals bullpen. So is he going to start the inning or come in if Kyle gets in any kind of trouble? Now that he has learned how to pitch from Berkman <laughs> between innings, showing him how to throw that fork ball or whatever fork he was doing, or splitter, whatever. 36,181 here at the ballpark. And there's still seats available for tomorrow night's game. Spalone has done a nice job since he came in to get the final out in the sixth inning. Yes. Only a lot of walk. Two plus innings. Round ball to second. Three hopper. 
Ellis throws out Schumacher. One more shot for the Rockies. After the game on the post-game edition of Missouri Lottery, Cardinals Live, Pat Paris and Cal Eldridge will be at the Stadium Sports Bar and Grill at Lumiere Place. The Cards turn up the heat on Aaron Cook in the sixth. Kyle Osh with a solid effort and Tony's post-game thoughts as well. Kyle McClellan stays on to pitch and we go back to the booth and reckon out, guys. Thanks, Cat. Great job as always. And I got that. They turned up the heat on Cook. I got it. Cat can turn a phrase, can he? We're the best of Corey Patterson. Patterson takes over in right field. McClellan in his second inning of work. And he's facing Eric Young. Switch hitter. Probably should say Junior. We should say Eric <laughs> Young Junior. Don't want to confuse people. Save Giambi. Just to get a little a couple guys on. Looking for the long ball to tie it or win it. Eric Young for a leadoff type guy. He's begging for the walk and he got it. Well, that's not the way Kyle McClellan wanted to start the ninth inning, walking the pinch hitter Young. He was two for 13 as a pinch hitter. <laughs> Chris Nelson's had a very nice game defensively 0 for 3 with the bat. And the Brewers have successfully retired the Pirates in the top of the eighth inning. They are leading the Pirates now 4 to 2 batting in the bottom of the eighth. Cardinal trying to nail this one down here in St. Louis and really you can look at the scoreboard and have fun with that and certainly the players do it more than they admit. But you've got to take care of business yourself. Absolutely. You win your ball game and everything else will take care of itself. You know, Tony's. Pretty realistic you know when he goes starts the season he goes I like my ball club but we'll find out if they're good enough. Watch out. He hits Chris Nelson on a fastball up and in. Hits him in the front shoulder, it looks like, and that's going to result in a visit to the mound again as Dave Duncan makes his way out and probably some action in the Cardinal bullpen. See a big sigh from Tony as he's already gone to the bullpen phone and called down who he wants. They get Salas to close her up. Close out the game last night. 
Tom McClellan's make it a little more interesting for him. Not, not a save situation yet. You know, yeah. Tony is so consistent, Al, about that pitch up and in. He just doesn't like it. Probably not happy about his guy doing it. No, nope. no, I mean it's that's what you could say. He is consistent when there's berserk when the opposition does it, but he doesn't like it when his own guy does it. And obviously it was the pitch just got away. And you and I kind of disagree with him because totally it it, it, it it just no one's trying to do it. You're trying to make a pitch, but, right? But that ball has a tendency. You want to have movement. And sometimes it doesn't move exactly where you want it. I'm almost, I'm almost uh, gotten up the uh, or had the right situation. Maybe is a better way to say it. The right situation when Tony and I discussed this to just tell him, don't you know that they're men and not machines? <laughs> because that's his it's favorite his, thing to yeah, say about players. Right, but uh, it only plays when he's talking. That's <laughs> right. Now, but he's fun to talk baseball with. There good curveball from Kyle McClellan. Tony's a great baseball man and he will talk baseball and, yeah, and he with loves, anybody. And he loves you to challenge and, and no ask him questions as to why this move was made or why you did this. Another good curveball and he strikes out Ionetta. Well, whatever Dave Duncan said, to throw the curveball. And throw it good. Here's Ty Wigginton. He struck out against Jason Mott. He blew him away, in fact. Our Budweiser player of the game, Al, good choice. Kyle Loesch, starter today, and it's in line for his 10th victory, right? And this might be it. Ground ball to short for call, takes it. And the double play is. Completed the Cardinals win game one of the three game series with the Rockies. And the Rockies picks up a couple runs, so we'll look for help from Pittsburgh. But as you said, you win your ball game, everything else will take care of itself. Good win for the Cardinals. Team effort, Kyle Loesch, the winner. He's now 10 and 7. Post game is coming up next.